Good evening. I'm Representative Michelle Socolo, and I'll be talking to you tonight about Article 26. Article 26 proposes we work together to create transit improvement districts in Lexington. And I'll cover the background, the objectives, and the process for doing that. Transit improvement districts envision an opportunity for private property owners, cities and towns, and the state to work together to create first mile and last mile transit solutions. Last legislative session, State Senator Cindy Friedman and I submitted legislation to create the opportunity for transit improvement districts statewide. While that legislation has not yet passed, we will be refiling it this session. And Lexington is being asked to consider if it wants to have a home rule to pursue transit improvement districts as a pilot. When we originally drafted the legislation, we were modeling it after the incredibly successful REV shuttle here in Lexington, looking at what Lexington did so well and also the lessons that we learned when we launched that shuttle to use that information to create a model for other communities to follow. Rather than wait for the statewide legislation to gain approval, which might take several sessions, Lexington would like to be able to continue to lead in this arena and is therefore seeking approval from town meeting to ask the general court for a home rule petition to allow Lexington to pilot transit improvement districts here in Lexington. Here is a copy of the Warren article itself. For the full motion, there'll be a link at the end of this presentation and it incorporates the detailed language of what the town would be asking the state to adopt. It is a long, uh, complex piece of legislation of about 15 pages, so it could not be provided on a slide. In order to ensure the success of the new route that will be created, advanced planning is required to be done before the route can gain approval from town meeting. In addition, a detailed financing plan and operating plan are part of that process. Each of the parties involved in creating the route will be required to contribute a minimum contribution. And you can see the amounts in the bullets on the screen. In general, a TID in order to be created requires a plan, property owner approval, town approval, collection of fees via the property tax bill by the treasure collector, procurement via normal state law, a private operator if the town desires to have it operated privately, and then a regular review of the quality of the service. At this juncture, the only thing the town is being asked to do is to consider whether or not it wants to ask the state to authorize Lexington to explore creating a TID. So a yes vote would not create a new transit district here in Lexington. It would just give us the opportunity to seek approval from the state to explore this option. You may be wondering, why are we asking for this now since the REV shuttle is already in place? And that's a good question. But many people don't know that the REV shuttle's financing is entirely voluntary. And right now, property owners participate only if they choose to participate. If a property is sold and the future owner doesn't want to contribute, they won't have to and potentially existing property owners paying into the REV shuttle could also choose on their own volition to stop participating in the funding. So this creates an uncertainty for the REV shuttle going forward. And it also is the case that the contributions are unequal and not well assessed across all of the participants and all the beneficiaries of the service route itself. So this would allow us to establish permanent ongoing predictable funding for the REV shuttle. In addition, it would enable us to explore future transit routes to connect to the broader transportation system. Lexington has close to six different commuter rail stations within close proximity, but no ground transportation connecting us up to areas like Anderson Regional Transportation Center or the commuter rail in Belmont, Concord, Lincoln, Waltham, and even having more routes to get us to Alewife. 
So this is just the opportunity to work together with our property owners to augment services beyond what we have today. The other reason why we want to pursue TID creation in Lexington is to have a predictable source of state funding. When the REV was originally launched, it was launched with a grant from the Mass Department of Transportation, which eventually expired and caused a problem with the financing for the shuttle route. At that point, the town had to step in and start making contributions on an annual basis, but that was the catalyst that enabled the shuttle to be open to the public as true public transit. So we're trying to create a way to have a regular uh, predictable state match as well, subject to appropriation from the state legislature. And if that appropriation was not obtained, the town would then be able to make a decision up front whether or not it wanted to continue with creating a shuttle. So this is a better way forward that, again, creates a consistent and predictable state match. One of the frequently asked questions I get are, how are the fees established? The beauty of the Transit Improvement District is that the fee schedule is highly flexible by intention. The town working with the private property owners and the riders and the state explore upfront during the planning process how they want to assess the fee on each individual property. And there are a wide variety of ways it could be determined, including on a case-by-case -case basis. Does every property in the district have to pay the fee? The legislation intentionally allows the community working with the property owners to exempt specific parcels from districts so they will not have to pay the fee. Those exemptions include small residential properties, less than three family units, small parcels with less than 5,000 square feet, commercial, and agricultural properties. It's also important to note that nonprofits and government parcels, since they are exempt from paying property taxes, are not allowed to be included in the Transit Improvement District unless they voluntarily choose to participate. 